Hopefully we can zip through this. I want to give you something, something a bit surprising. There's a bit of you that's actually older than you are. Well, they say, oh, David Williams is mad. But that is particularly crazy. But actually, how old's your skin? I'm no, no dermatologist, but a, a, a few weeks old at that maximum, it's always descremating. All those cells are replicating inside and then coming to the surface and descremating. That's what dust is, isn't it? But actually, that means that it's very, very young. Think, though, about the lens, about the proteins, the middle of the nucleus of your lens. When you were born, they had already been there for several months because they were formed um, a portion through your, through your gestation. And they've just carried on there, sitting there, not able to move at all. Nothing's happened to them. Well, maybe something has happened to them. Because actually, the whole purpose of the lens is to focus light on your, on your retina. And that means that there's light coming through your lens all the time. Actually, that's the question. Why is it the lens is transparent? The lens is almost all protein. And a good sirloin steak, apologies to the vegans among you, I, I still think sirloin steak is, is good, but uh, um, uh, uh, a good sirloin steak is, is, is equally uh, the same amount of protein, but you can't see through it. Can you? What is it that makes your lens transparent? Those proteins are really tightly packed together, but with cysteine amino acids in them. Good to see the students here. Students, what's special about cysteine? You're, you're, you're closer to the first year of biochemistry than any of the, the rest. Oh, well, it, of course, it's got an SH group, what we call a thiol group to it. And the whole point of that is the, it's negatively charged, so it attracts water um, to itself. And it just gives the right amount of water. The, the proteins are into the liquid crystal formation, which makes them uh, transparent. The trouble is, of course, as the light comes into your lens, if you've got two SH groups together, even those of us a long way from that first year biochemistry will remember that they're photooxidized to produce a... Oh, you are asleep. Disulfide bridge. Okay. Now, too many disulfide bridges aggregates those proteins together. Too many proteins aggregated together produces a cataract. A cataract just like this one in, uh, in little Harvey, this 14-year-old beagle. And this dog is actually the start of my interest in age-related cataract and how to, how to prevent it. And that's because 18 years ago, gosh, in the last millennium, it was only one I was thinking about, it's the, it's the last millennium. In the last millennium, I went to BSAVA and I went in to the commercial exhibition and there, Walt, the Waltham uh, group had a new uh, dog food um, with an antioxidant in. They said it was good for joints, good for hearts, good for brains. I went up to them and I said, what about good for eyes? You don't say good for eyes. Is it good for eyes, they said? Well, it was the, shows how long ago it was. It was the, the first cyber cafe at BSAV that allowed people to go online. Well, of course, nobody had an online phone. Actually, I don't have an online phone either. But, but, uh, but so nobody was able to do it. I went to the cyber cafe, and for the rest of the BSAV, that, the rest of that day, I, uh, I worked on, uh, on, on what was it that was good for the eye about antioxidants. And I found, of course, that the lens was, was, was always going to be, going to be uh, uh, in an oxidized state if you had cataracts like this. And the antioxidants could hopefully prevent that from, from happening. So I went to them the next day and I provided them with a 2,000 word essay on why antioxidants, they weren't expecting that. <laughs> and to cut, to, cut, to cut a long short story short, uh, they agreed eventually to fund a year's worth of work. This was the year 2000. So I said, let me look at 2,000 dogs. That's another story of how we managed to get through that in a year. But I looked at 2,000 normal dogs, not ones that had come to me for eye problems, to see how many of them had cataracts. And we found that about by 11 years of age, every dog had some degree of uh, lens opacification. And the question was, could we prevent that? And actually, more than that maybe, could we use the, the dog as a model to prevent a human, uh, um, a human cataract formation? 
And what we did, we looked at a number of dogs and fed them different uh, uh, antioxidant formulations. Tell me, how many of you eat uh, five portions of fruit and vegetable a day? Oh, a few. Um, so what you'll find is that actually in the work that we did, the, the, the antioxidants in, in fruit and vegetables, uh, vitamin C, vitamin E, flavonoids, carotenoids, they were quite good at preventing, at, at, at slowing down cataract formation. But better than that was a single molecule called alpha lipoic acid. And we've shown that that slows down cataract formation in, in aging dogs and also that it prevents diabetic cataract happening in, in dogs with uh, with with diabetes. So the question is then, having shown that and published that work, can we persuade the medics to then trial that in, in people? You know, what a wonderful talk, the last one, about, about that link between, between medics and vets is actually very difficult. If I had a thousand rats or mice and I had proved that, then the medics are very happy to take us on board. But taking a uh, hundred uh, pet-owned dogs and trying to show them that's a good model, I said, that's a much better model. That it's the right size of eye compared with the person. It's the right length, of, a much better length of age than, than a year or two. And much better a range of diet that these animals are, are having, much better than rodent chow. Not that I've ever had rodent chow, I must admit, to eat. But, um, but, but so it's a question then of how better can, how can we use that dog model? The other thing, I, I was saying I do, I'm interested in ethics, and the other thing from an ethical point of view is that we can use these dogs as a model, benefit the dogs by slowing their cataract formation, and hopefully benefit people as well. So what I'd like to leave you with is that with alpha lipoic acid, uh, you could live to see better for longer. Thank you very much indeed. Thank <laughs> you.